Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about Game Maker Studio 2. So in the past, I've talked about structs, I've talked about the static keyword, and I've talked about methods. Uh, let's talk about all those three things together. This is really the last thing that I want to talk about with regards to the new Game Maker Studio 2 language features. Um, I meant to do this earlier, when 2.3 first came out, but I just got distracted by making videos on other things, so I'm doing it now instead. Static methods. Uh, the common example for this would be if you had something like a vector constructor. I'm going to call it vector2. It's going to take an x and a y. And it's going to be marked as a constructor. Inside, it's going to not do anything super special. Uh, we can say self.x equals x as the parameter. We can say self.y equals y as the parameter. Some people, when they're writing constructors, they like to prefix their parameters with an underscore. I personally don't like this. I think it makes my code look ugly, and I prefer not not doing that. Uh, I would rather just use the self keyword to make explicit what is an instance variable and what is a um, a local or parameter variable. Either way is fine. A long time ago, there was a bug in, in Game Maker, way back in the beginning of 2.3, where um, this would not work properly, but that has long since been resolved, and um, there's no technical reason why you can't. So let's, uh, let's instantiate a couple of these. We can say, uh, let's just call it a is going to equal a new vector2. Uh, we can give that values of like 10 and 5. Uh, we can say b equals also a new vector2. And these are going to have values of, uh, let's say, 20 and 10 is fine. Uh, we can show message uh, the value of a. We can show message the value of b. Um, I think you all know what's going to happen. You're going to see a struct containing uh, x equals 10 and y equals 5, and then x equals 20 and y equals 10 as the values. Let's not repeat the value 10. Let's also make this like 15 or something. Let's just change that to 15. Uh, you can tack methods onto here. A common one would be something like add. So if you were to try to have a, uh, if you were to have a method which adds the current vector to a, a new vector, and you return a new vector, um, which contains self.x plus the new vector's x, self.y plus the new vector's y. And then you can uh, you can use this. You can call this, and it'll return a new vector too. Uh, we can say c is a dot add b show message c. That is going to be uh, thirty and thirty and twenty, I believe, are going to be the values after the uh, the original functions. You can see when I print out uh, when I convert a and b to strings. Um, the add function is uh, is part of that. Now, so we have uh, f uh, 10, 5. And the add function, we have 20, 15, and the add function. And when we add them together, we have 30, 20, and uh, the new vector 2 has its own add function, add method, since it's a, it's really a method. OK, that's pretty basic. Uh, vector 2s are usually the first example you see when people talk about using structs in Game Maker as an example. Uh, that's fine. So let's say you have a lot of these. Uh, these were initially called lightweight objects by yo-yo games rather than structs, and uh, the purpose of them is to um, is to allow you to arrange data uh, in ways without having to use a, an entire like game maker instance, which comes with a lot of overhead. Um, so it's not it's definitely not uncommon that you might want to have a lot of these in a lot of these in your game at once. Uh, vector two certainly vector types uh, coordinates in space. You may have a lot of. Uh, let's create a list. Uh, DS list create and then let's repeat. Uh, how about let's say a million times. A uh, thousand million and add a uh, to the list a new vector two and this is definitely excessive a million instances of a million instances of a struct is definitely excessive but I do want to have a lot of them so that you can see um, so that you can see a, a big picture view of how the computer is going to handle this uh, let me say I don't really care what the actual coordinates are obviously. Uh, we're just going to give the x and y positions a random value between 0 and 10. So let's run the game. You'll note that I am not deleting this list when I'm done with it, because I do want it to remain in memory so that we can see some things. Uh, one, this window took a, a little bit longer to appear, since it had to actually create 100,000, 100, 000, 100 uh, a million, rather, instances of the struct. 
So I am going to uh, I am going to run this in debug mode. Debug mode is going to allow us to see a, a measurement of how much memory the game is using uh, over here in the graph. The buffers panel can go away. I don't really need that right now. Go away, you. Up here in the uh, in the upper left of the screen, you can see a little graph of the memory usage and some other things. Uh, right now, we're at about 620 megabytes of memory uh, that the game is using. If you looked in Task Manager, you would see it's slightly higher. That's because Task Manager counts some of the stuff that Game Maker does in the background, uh, while uh, the debugger's memory graph really only shows the, the amount of memory that your game is using. All right, that's a lot. Uh, that's definitely excessive. It's not as much as some of the other things I've got open on my computer. Google Chrome, for example, has exactly two tabs open right now, and um, and it's using almost twice that amount of memory. Uh, the Game Maker IDE itself is using a, a significant amount of memory. If I actually had anything open in Adobe Premiere, the video editor, there would be some significant amount of space being eaten by that as well. How can we reduce that? So, if instead of making um. Instead of making the add method a normal variable, uh, you can make it a static variable, a static method uh, with a static keyword. I've made videos on how static members work in the past. Uh, you may want to go watch those videos if you're not already familiar. If you've used languages like Java and C Sharp, uh, static in GML works slightly different than it does in those languages. Uh, you have been warned. Instead of accessing a static member with something like the, uh, the class name, uh, you can't do this. Uh, the way that you can in a language such as C-sharp or Java. Uh, instead, the add method is simply shared between all instances of a, um, of a class. This kind of used to annoy me at first, now I've gotten used to it. It's useful in its own right in some different ways uh, than it is in languages like Java and C-sharp. Anyway, if I run this now and pay attention to what happens to the memory usage, uh, we are going to see that it actually goes way down. In fact, it's probably gone farther down than uh, you might expect it to at first. And I really can close this buffers window because I really don't need that right now. I don't know why it appears every time I open the debugger. Instead of 600 and change megabytes of memory, we're, we're sitting at about 350 instead. Um, it's been cut down by almost 50%. And the only thing that we did was uh, set the add method to be static. Intuitively in your head, that sounds approximately correct. Um, I am not going to go through the process of counting all of the memory that each struct uses because... Uh, Game Maker is a rather high-level dynamic language, and there's a lot of overhead in places that you might not account for. So trying to count up how many bits and bytes that each struct uses is kind of a, a messy ordeal that I'm not going to do right now. But at the end of the day, each instance of this Vector2 struct not having its own copy of the same method uh, does significantly decrease the amount of memory that it uses. So in addition to, in addition to computer memory, in addition to RAM space, People have uh, proposed that this is also slightly faster, that using static methods is slightly faster than using regular methods because there's a single copy of it. I have not tested this. If it's true, it's very, very small and won't really affect the performance of your game. Uh, GML is a slow language. If there's slowdown in your game, it's probably coming from elsewhere. If you're on the Game Maker forums or Discord, there are a couple people who might be able to tell you exactly how many CPU instructions method calls take, but um, to me, it's really inconsequential. It really doesn't matter. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time trying to make my stuff run faster by making methods static. Uh, for me, it's much more about not having duplicate copies of, of a method that don't need to be there and wasting space in the memory. Now, given that the purpose of a static property, a static variable, is that it's only defined once, uh, you might expect at first that this won't really behave correctly because you might expect that um, the add method is bound instead of to each instance which calls it. Uh, you might expect that it's bound instead to the first instance which is created. And rest assured this is not the case. If I were to uncomment this right now, I guess I can comment out the, the whole list thing. Notice, by the way, that I did not ever destroy this list anywhere. Uh, that is obviously a memory leak, but the purpose of that little exercise was to show how much memory was exactly leaked um, in a sense, so... Everything's good on that front. If I were to run this again, uh, you would see that a.addb will indeed give you the same answer. Um, however, if you try to use the add method on another another instance of the struct, let's say b.add um, c, so we can add the result to, to, to c. Actually, even better, let's do c.addb. Let's, let's call the add method on the, uh, the new struct. 
And then we can show message the result of D. Let's comment out these first two so they're not wasting time. Uh, we are going to see that everything behaves as expected. So A dot add B, 15, uh, 10 and 5 plus 20 and 15 is indeed 30 and 20 as we had before. Uh, that's fine. A was, after all, the first instance of this vector 2 struct that was instantiated. Um, and then we do it again. We add 30 and 20 to, what is it, 20 and 15. Uh, we get 50 and 35, and we can indeed see that uh, the scope that the add method is being called in is indeed correct. You can still use this the same way that you used any other method in the past. If you were to do the little scoping exercises, uh, the scoping tests that I did on uh, the earlier video that I posted today, you would see that the scope of each of these functions is indeed correct, just in case this little demo here didn't convince you and you, uh, and you need a little bit more evidence. So, another thing that you can do in GameMaker, of course, is GameMaker being a dynamically typed language allows you to set any variable to anything at almost any, any point in time. And that means you could set, uh, for example, a.add to something else. Um, you could set it to its own function. You could set it to anything, but I'm going to go with a function here just, to, um, just so that the game doesn't totally explode. Uh, let's give it a, another other vector. Uh, we can make this a method for, for what it's worth. I talked about the method function in the last video as well. And then uh, this function can return, instead of a, a new vector2, uh, containing, uh, containing the self and the other vector added together, we can make a new vector2 of like negative infinity, negative infinity. Uh, let's say var d is going to equal a dot add. We can add it to anything. It's going to be negative infinity either way. Uh, show message d. Come on. Keys, typing, fingers. Uh, this is going to show us what we saw before. So uh, we're going to have a and b added together, then c and b added together. And now we're going to have um, negative, negative infinity. Because we just kind of threw our hands in the air and gave up on this add method and we turned it into something else. So this could be bad news. If, uh, if the static variable add were to be overwritten, if you were to try and, let's say, var e is going to equal uh, c dot add b again, and then we can show message the value of e. This could be bad if when you set the value of the uh, static add variable to something else over here on line 30, it, if it also were to change the, um, the method for everything else. Uh, fortunately, that is not actually what happens. If you were to overwrite all right, 30, 20, 50, 35, uh, negative infinity on two axes. If you were to try to overwrite a static method with something else, uh, instead of overwriting it for every, instead of actually changing the static variable, uh, like you might expect, it actually just creates a new value inside A, which is not a static, a static method. This does mean that A now no longer has access to the static add method anymore, which is kind of a problem. Uh, but at least it doesn't affect anything else in the game. You can see when we see dot add b, uh, we still have the same results as before when we did it before we, before we tried to interfere with anything. So that's good. Um, if you were to, uh, let's close this. I'm going to comment out some more of these now. If you want to see that a now has just gained a regular variable in this here, in this line 30 here, uh, we can show message a and we can see what it contains. And then we can do it again after we mess with the add method. Uh, we can see first that it contains just two values, 10 uh, and 5, x and y. And the static method is not included in that. The static method kind of isn't really shown when you convert a, uh, when you display a struct as a string. And afterwards, uh, it's back. We have 10, 5, and an add function method. That is because add is a normal method. Uh, it's not a static one anymore, and it will now appear. When you, when you show a message. And if you were to do that to any of the other ones, if you were to just uh, show the message value of B, C, D, whatever, uh, you would see that it's a... Uh, they also still use the static version. So that's good. This also, by the way, goes for uh, inheritance. If you were to create another struct... Uh, let's, just, let's just call it vector3, x, y, z. Uh, calls, a, uh, calls a superclass. It, let's say it inherits from vector2 passes on the x and y. It's a constructor. Uh, we can say self.z is going to equal z. We can say static add is going to be function. And it takes another. And 
Uh, we can say show message. Ah, dramatic screaming. Just just so that we can see something different is happening. That's a that's a regular colon, not a semicolon. Even though vector three does ex extend to vector two, uh, the static add method shouldn't really affect anything. Uh, the same way that the same way that messing with your own uh, static members do outside of the constructor, which is good. I have all these commented out, right? I'm going to go back to commenting all of those out. Let's at the bottom of this say var f is going to equal new vector three. I can give that some values four, four, and four. Is that a bad number? I feel like that's a bad number for some reason. Let's change that to something else. I don't know if that's like some kind of weird Nazi symbolism or something. Actually, I think that's another number, but you know what? Whatever. We can say f dot add another vector. We can give it. We can give it vector a. It doesn't matter. Vector three's static add method doesn't actually return anything. It just screams. Uh, so we'll be able to see that working. And then var. What's the letter after F? G. It's going to equal. We can see to add B again. And then we can show the result of that. So we're going to see that uh, this is going to call the vector 3 add method. And, um, and then we'll be back to normal. So the vector 2 dot add method didn't, um, didn't go away or anything. It didn't get changed or anything in the vector 3 constructor. Uh, so that's good. Let's see, so we're screaming. Ah, screaming in terror. That's fine. I do the worst screams. And uh, we can uh, go back to normal vector, uh, rather var g is going to be uh, c.addb, and that's going back to the math that we had before. Um, so the vector 2's add method has not been modified in any way, shape, or form by the vector 3's add method. And that's good. Again, uh, you, if you accidentally do that, it could cause a lot of confusion because suddenly the code that you think you're calling uh, may not be the code that's actually being called. Uh, these are inherited. I don't know what I just did there. If I were to comment out vector3.add, uh, you would see that these are inherited. It's not actually going to do anything with z, so this is just going to behave like a vector2. It's just going to add the x and the y's together. Um, show message this real quick. It's just going to add um, two to uh, each of A and B's things, so that should be 12 and 7, indeed 12 and 7. Uh, so the static add method has now been inherited instead of, uh, instead of redefined in the vector 3's constructor, and then we're back to normal as before. Okay, static methods. So this can be a lot of fun. Uh, again, this can save you some amount of uh, computer memory in your game if you have a lot of structs with a lot of methods in your game. You can use this if you want. I know people who make every single method and every single struct that they can that they create static. If you want to do that, that's usually fine. In some situations, it might actually be better to give um, to give different instances of different structs their own methods that aren't static. For example, if you do intend on switching them around constantly like this uh, and reassigning them later, uh, you may want to not make your struct method static. But you can do it this what you will. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two of these videos a week, so if you find this kind of thing interesting, definitely subscribe. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, there's a lot of people whose names are at the beginning of the alphabet here, Posho and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.